So this is kind of a two-part podcast that we're in the middle of here, and it's talk like a CFO and talk like a CEO. And we're going to start off with what I would consider the boring one, and that's the talk like a CFO, because what self-respecting engineer wants to be a CFO? We don't like receipts. We don't like talking about financials unless it's getting paid. (laughs) Yeah. So I got to go ahead and pop your bubbles here. And a CFO doesn't care about receipts either. (laughs) (laughs) They don't care about the day-to-day operations so much as they care about what financial actions are going to increase profits in their company. And so that is what a CFO cares about. And to some extent, a little bit deeper in that, I mean, they want to make sure the finances work. To some extent, you know, they're a little disconnected from the revenue. All right. Now, one, they're looking at the revenue coming in. All right. But they might not be responsible for generating that revenue, but they are responsible for how that revenue gets allocated, you know, um, profits and losses and all that kind of stuff. And so you really have to think about the financial aspect and how they manage that. And that is their core responsibility is to make sure that an organization's finances are managed properly. That means spending more money, they're okay if they know that that's going to balance out with increased revenue. Now, how do you get that increased revenue? Not top of their list. They're they're okay knowing that, hey, revenue is going to increase, so expenses can increase. And once you kind of get in that general area with CFOs and have those sort of conversations, then then you get a lot of traction with these guys. Yeah, so... You have to think of the CFO, just like the CEO, they're an executive who's trying to run a company. When they see you come in and talk about firewalls, they're thinking, one more expense, one more thing to cut into the bottom line. So a CFO wants to know, you know, they're looking at how am I being responsible with the resources given to me? And that's difficult because... If you've never been in a CFO role, maybe in your personal world, you have to manage your finances at home and you're terrible about it. You know, you know that if you spent less money than you made this month, it was a win. Maybe that's the way you see finances. Well, a CFO sees things much more complicated. They're actually one of your best resources when it comes to defining what's going to help the company. And so when you talk to a CFO, you have to, as we tell people in the tool all the time, you have to talk about projects in context of how they're going to help the company so that the CFO can think, okay, is this a risk I want to take on? I'm going to have a liability of, you know, $10,000 on a firewall. Is this going to help our company in a adequate amount? And so you've got to put it in that context. A CFO is looking at this in terms of risk and reward and similar items. They're also really great at helping you find taxable breaks or tax breaks. So, uh, you know, I was talking to a CFO not too long ago, and we were talking about ways to write off um, wellness programs in companies. So like if you're running a company, how do you write off a gym membership? So in Nebraska, I don't know how it's in other states, you can't write off gym memberships. And it sucks because we have all these people working from home now and they need to get exercise. It's actually Mm -hmm. a health hazard, the amount we are sitting every day. You've got to get up and move people. Um, Blood clots are a very real problem. So I'm talking to my CFO about how do we write this off as taxes? Like, well, we can't write off taxes, but maybe we can write off a consultant or maybe we can write off. There's another tax code that allows for a wellness program. And so until the tax code catches up, We're trying to find a way to write this off. Your CFO will do the same thing for you in technology. There's some technology they can write off. There's depreciation schedules. There's all sorts of um, things that you can do that allow them to take advantage of different grants and different uh, processes out there. You don't need to know this stuff. Absolutely. They already know it. All you've got to do is say, hey, are there any advantages that are facing your company that we can work with you to figure out? So tax advantages on depreciation schedules. Are there any advantages we can take care of by re, um, reassessing the project title even? Like, hey, this project is actually going to help X, Y, or Z. Does that um, different cost center give you a way of 
writing this off or taking advantage. So maybe they'll be able to spend 20% more because now they can write it off as a tax-free item. These are things you want to ask the CFO about. So talking like a CFO means talking in a way that says, how can we make you money? How can we save you money? And asking those questions. And I think Skip tells people this all the time. You don't have to be the financial expert. You already know the financial expert. It's the CFO to the company. And here's the crazy thing about CFOs. It's just like a CEO. The way they manage cash flow and taxes is unique to each company. So they've got this, they've got this weird way of looking at their own finances that follows a general guideline because it's taxes and cash. It all comes down to, did you make money? And what did you do with that money? But inside their company, they know where their write-offs are. They know where their advantages are. They know in their industry what programs are available for them to write things off. Have them educate you. Have them talk to you about what it is they're looking for and what helps them overall. Don't be the CFO. Learn from them. Yes, that 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 is a really important element. I think too many times, and, and I probably have said this before, uh, and I'll keep saying it again until the industry changes. Um, as MSPs, we show up to our client engagements with this expectation that we need to educate our clients about technology. And if we just leave it in those terms, I think that's fundamentally wrong. We need to show up at these engagements, allowing our clients to educate us about their business. Now, yes, along the way, we're, we're going to explain things. We're going to make sure they understand how technology is benefiting them. But this, this role of teaching our clients our core job is not what we need to be doing as MSPs. And so this is an important element, a change in dynamic and understanding how our clients see how technology fits into their cash flow and their businesses is really important to, to change us around and leverage their expertise. Yeah. And I think as engineers, we are so used to being polymaths a lot of time where we think we're experts in everything. Yeah. <laughs> we forget exactly what Skip said. Uh, we are We have to know so many different things that we forget that. You know, compared to a CFO, unless you are some kind of savant with finances, you are a entry level employee when yes. it comes to finance. Very you know, much. I thought coming into a business, I had a fairly good grasp on finance. I'd been through MBA courses on account management, accounting and management. And I thought, oh, I'm pretty good. I knew nothing coming into uh, the company. Like, sure, I knew what cash flow was, but then all of a sudden things like cash flow deficits come into play. And then there are specific terms for having enough cash flow, but not having enough cash on hand. And then there's all sorts of things around um, how many and how I determine my cost centers. How many cost centers do I have and what cost centers do I want to use and what do they have for tax liability and how do I take advantage of them so I know I'm not overspending in certain areas. All this stuff is just me scratching the surface. Yes. And yeah. I have some very smart people to help me understand where I am on that. I, I don't think I'm dumb, but when it comes to this kind of stuff, this level, it's an ever growing uh, set of knowledge that I am gaining year after year after year. And these CFOs have spent a lifetime learning it. Yes. And you got to take advantage of it. You want to talk like a CFO, learn from CFOs. And that's it. So, you know, throughout my career, I, I've developed this really strange hobby. Uh, it, it's entirely debatable about how how wise this move is or not. But uh, other people have normal hobbies. Uh, I, I have this weird one where I like to start small businesses. Mm. All right. Uh, Serial entrepreneurs. I guess so. And th they are small. I, I definitely don't want to overstate what I'm doing. But in each one of these engagements that I get into, I start off thinking, you know, I've, I've done a little small business stuff before. I know how to do this. And inevitably, each time I start into something I'm like, wow, I, I, I never really appreciated this aspect of the finances. And so, you know, here's a here's a little side note on any anytime I engage with a CFO, you bet I'm listening closely to them because not only do I want to learn so that I can, you know, operate in that, that MSP mindset, but I'm thinking I can really use some of this knowledge elsewhere in, yeah. in my strange little hobbies. Yeah. And, you know, 
I'm a, I, I love playing games. I love playing video games. It's kind of the way I relax. Some people watch sports. Some people do other things. I like playing video games. And sometimes in my head, I see this resource management mechanic in my head, like Sim City almost. And it's like, man, I wish it was that simple. And it's not. <laughs> Even in the most complex video games for resource management or board games for resource management, nothing compares to business finance. So don't think just because you're really good at Terra Mystica or really great at the economics in some video game that's really complicated and you're the only person who truly understands it. You're nothing compared to the CFO who is dealing with multiple accounting styles as yes. well as multiple tax adherences. There's a reason why the IRS is so big, people. And it's because it's complicated. And there's always an exception to every rule. And there's <laughs> always things to learn. There's always one more thing you didn't know. And you end up come back and biting you. Yep. And every year, I think I finally got things in order. My CFO says, no, you're still stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, she doesn't necessarily say those words, but I feel that way yeah. because I, I thought I had everything in, in order this year. I thought I was getting ahead, but I was wrong. And mm -hmm. they teach me something new. And sometimes I learn something as an engineer or as an ex-engineer where I'm like, oh, oh, well, so if if that's the case, then why don't we use that type of grant to just fund all these network resources. And the CFO will go like, what do you mean? Like, well, switches, access points, firewalls, all of those, mm -hmm. you you got coming up as a refresh here in a year. If we just go ahead and slip them into that grant proposal you're doing or into that write-off you're looking at, we could do all those at once and you could get a massive tax benefit. Because the CFO doesn't understand the difference between an access point and a firewall and a PC on their desk or a mouse. Right. They just know they're pieces of technology. So when they say, hey, we got this uh, grant or we have this, like, a, let's say you're an educational school and ugh, educational school. Yeah. <laughs> let's see. Now, what's a non-educational school look like? <laughs> I don't know. There uh, may be a few of them out there, though. <laughs> That's not. You know, there's a couple <laughs> in the podcast going, I went to one of those. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> but. You know, you've got school programs like E-Rate and these schools don't know exactly what fits into their E-Rate program. They pay consultants a lot of money to tell them which assets belong in which categories so they can get the right reimbursements. And there's a lot of money to be had there. And you can be a great asset if you just open your mind, be a little humble and say, what grant programs are you using in your nonprofit or in your school? And let's see if any of them fit or we can fit technology into them so that you don't have to pay as much and you could pay us more. Yay. Everybody and, wins. And so yeah, that's a really important element. So, I, um, and, and so we're, I don't know, we're, we're several minutes in here in this podcast. We hadn't had an old skip story yet. So here we go. Oh, no. uh, <laughs> so uh, sometimes it's not about how much money is being spent. It's how the money is being spent. Yes. So years ago, in my oil and gas industry, I'm working with these drilling managers and they have to have this very specialized communication between the drill floor. And this is where, you know, the big giant, you know, pipe goes into the ground and they have a control room very, very nearby that is monitoring and operating all this. And because you've got, you know, highly flammable gases coming out of this hole in the ground, you have to be careful about the type of electronics you put in there. And so um, I found this drilling engineer and I was going through their expenses and it was showing up into their IT budget. And I, I realized that they were paying, it was like $20 a day for an intercom system. And I thought, what, what, uh, what do you mean? And sure enough, I dig in and there's this intrinsically safe intercom between the drill floor and the, the control booth. And it was a device that, in and of itself cost 200 bucks, $200. But they were willing to pay $20 a day for this because they could allocate the ex expenses that made sense to their financial models. It wasn't that, hey, they could buy it cheaper if they just did it, but they could manage that expense better if they paid on a per day basis. That sounds crazy, but sometimes when you talk with your CFOs, Remember, this is not, hey, you need to spend X amount of dollars. It's need. It's that we need to spend X amount of dollars over a certain time period, 
against a certain uh, cost center. We need to spend it in a particular category. And, and yep. when you begin to break that out and realize that there might not really be that that limit that you think is there, you can actually sell your CFOs on more expenditures because they can spend it differently. Yes. Like in an E-rate program, they might get, they might be an impoverished school where they get 70% reimbursement as long as they can make it a, uh, an expense that makes sense to network uh, efficiency. But, you know, I just saw something in my head while Skip was talking, like if, if sales is chicken, what, how do you, how do you put it, Skip? Uh, rats, blood, and chicken bones. If sales <laughs> is rats, blood, and chicken bones, uh, finance is alchemy. There we go. Yes. There are <laughs> rules. They don't necessarily make sense, but it builds this awesome thing. So if yeah. you read enough fantasy, you find out that alchemy is not chemistry. Uh, so chemistry, yeah. you know, if you add hydrogen and water together, you burn it, you get or hydrogen, and oxygen, you burn it, you get water. That makes sense. Falls falls a, a logical set of rules and you get a result um, with alchemy you might burn uh you know oxygen and hydrogen together and you might get um glitter <laughs> <There you're laughs> you know you get glitter every time <laughs> yeah and so with a cfo with with this finance there are rules like this where you've got to write off twenty dollars a month well well, okay. in ten in ten <laughs> months, that's that's as much as a product is. So why don't I just buy the product? No, <laughs> that's right, that's right. And then you can have the CFO will go through this entire process, and by the time they get marking down this this board, like what they did, and they show you the spreadsheets, and you're like, you still don't get it. But for some reason, at the end, there's profit. And you're like, how the heck did you do that? <laughs> and that's yeah. why we have CFOs, and why CFOs make so much money because it's alchemy. It's this. You have to know what rules are in place and how to manage them so you can get a resultant set that is favorable to your company. And as engineers, as uh, technology people, to us, it's like, okay, I understand half of it, but I need the CFO to explain to me what this means for their company and how we can take advantage of it. So a way to get in with a CFO is uh, to tell whoever your uh main lead contact is your point of contact is at your client say hey look i want to understand how uh finances work better work at your company uh can you give me some time with your cfo or your controller to explain to me how write-offs work within your industry because i don't know but there may be a number of write-offs that you can have that I can connect in my head, knowing technology really well, your CFO can say, we yeah. get write-offs for X, Y, and Z. Maybe they get write-offs for services. Maybe they get write-offs for uh, internet connections. And then you can say, well, did you know that you're not including all these things? Well, I didn't know those were part of the system. Now you do. And, and so that's the stuff, the stuff that you don't know the CFOs do. Yes. And that, that just so, that, that is so connect. empowering. You yeah. gotta bridge those two conversations, people. If you go walk in there with a, it's our it's our old saying. If you walk in there with a PowerPoint presentation and you're telling them everything you know about finance, you're not learning anything. You're not having a conversation. You're telling them you're the expert. You don't need the CFO's knowledge. If you walk in there with an agenda that says, "Hey, I need to learn from the CFO. I want to know what tax programs you have in place, what grant programs you have in place, anything that I can align with." to make sure that you're getting as much help as you can get or taking advantage of what you can take advantage of. You teach me the CFO role for your company, and then we will find things that, that work with you. And then when you go in and you try to sell that big project on upgrading their internet, you can say, well, 30% of this gets written off because you're part of the E-rate program and blah, 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 blah. And then they're like, oh, well, that's not as hard of a pill to swallow then. And then every year that 30% gets written off. Cool. How do we know this? Well, Cheryl, the CFO told me that you have this program and you're underutilizing it. Yep. And, and some of these can pay off just enormously for your business. So we, we've mentioned E-rate and, and I've had a lot of personal experience that we, we dealt with uh, a school district one time. It was one of the poorest school districts in, in the entire state of Texas. It's a wide range there. But this school district, we were able to sell them multiple 
million dollar projects. All right. Because they were so poor, they only had to pay 10 cents on the dollar. So when I show up with them or our account team shows up with them and says, look, we have a million dollar project, but at the end of the day, your cost, your actual outlay on this is only going to be a hundred grand. Well, that money was in the budget. And so, uh, you know, E-Rate has become a popular one. I think, it, you know, because of a lot of the successes around there. But here's the thing. These little incentives, whether it's tax based or just accounting rules or, or things that we don't even know about, these exist in multiple industries. You don't know about them. Go ask your clients. They do. And, and that's where you're able to really, you know, jumpstart is you use the information that you don't have but it's available to you. Yes. And these are the gaps. This is how you talk like a CFO. You know, you may not know anything about cash flow. You may not know anything about uh, taxes and you may hate the sheer thought of talking about taxes and receipts. Yes. That's yes. okay. <laughs> your CFO, that's the world they live in. And they're your subject matter expert. They're your resource. And so having an annual conversation with them, like, okay, what are the tax write-offs this year? Where, where can we align? You might find yourself taking a client that is like a D level or a C level client and turning them to an A level client, because now you're aligning with the scope of, of finance that they have. And once you work within that financial scope, you can see a lot of cash pouring really quickly. And again, this is why we have CFOs, because they're able to turn a dime into a dollar. It's alchemy. You can't turn a dime <laughs> into a dollar. Yes, you can in, in yes. finance. In finance, yep. you can do that. And that CFO can look at your $1,000, your $10,000 ask and be like, oh, that's actually going to cost us $1,000. As long as we classify it as a unicorn. You know, go ahead and laugh all you want, but this is the way finance works. And there are so many MSPs out there that are not taking advantage of the CFO's knowledge and they're losing out on hundreds, if not millions, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars of work from clients that are suffering because the client doesn't think they can afford something. And you're like, Ugh, they never spend anything anyway. So you write them off as just another break fix client. Mm -hmm. When they could be one of your best clients. I, I have I have plenty of stories about schools. I've turned from $1,500 clients into $8,500 clients because we leveraged E-rate. These are things that you all need to know how to do. And you may not know them, but the CFO does. Find out who the financial officer is for your client and have at least one conversation with them. Buy them a steak dinner. Find out what they love and say, hey, I will take you and your wife out for a steak dinner. If you want, if you will just give me an hour to talk through what your write-offs are and how your finances work so we can align with it. And you as an engineer are going to get a, a billion ideas. I guarantee you an hour with a CFO, you're going to have a bunch of ideas on how to leverage your existing infrastructure and services in new ways that are cheap for the client and result in massive revenue for you. Absolutely. So that's a great topic. I, I'm excited for next week's topic, Talk Like a CEO, where we're going to walk through the same concept for the CEO who loves to see profits, but doesn't care how it's done. So we'll talk to everyone next week on that. See you later. Thanks, everyone.